Morning guys, just thought I'd do another little update on the tank um, progress so far. Everything's doing well. I've just finished testing actually. Um, tested all my parameters this morning. I've been doing water changes quite less frequently now. I've been doing them like once every month and I've only been doing 10%, so like 25 litres every month. Um, I'm actually going to start increasing this again, not because I've seen anything detrimental happening in the tank, nothing whatsoever. It's just my um, local fish store a couple of weeks ago. They mentioned to me that the only problem with water changes is every now and again you'll hear someone, it's going absolutely fine, no water changes, everything's absolutely fine, then all of a sudden it will just crash out of nowhere. Um, and I just don't want this happening. So I think I am going to uh, do my water changes maybe like once every other week now, just doing 10%, uh, just to make sure that I don't experience any issues because at the moment you can see everything's doing really well. <coughs> yeah, all looking really good. You will notice that a couple of fish have gone. The yellow tang I mentioned in my last video I had to get rid of because it was just ripping shreds out of the purple tang in there. They just weren't getting on at all. Um, so yeah, after a couple of weeks of the yellow being gone, the purple started being an absolute pain in the backside to my cardinal. I'd see the cardinal right up in this top corner up here and then all of a sudden there'll be a big splash of water um, and it's the purple tang bullying him basically, just a territorial thing. Um, so yeah, I ended up getting the purple tang out of the tank, um, got rid. The lipstick will be going fairly shortly. I mean, he's happy at the moment. He's always always hunting around for food. He seems to be happy, but yes, I do know that he's getting quite big, um, and I just don't I just don't think it's fair personally. Um, so yeah, he will be coming out in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, I did replace the two tangs with a couple of other fish. Uh, I got a cleaner ras. He's great every morning. As my friend John Gwynn said, um, all the fish are queuing up basically right in the corner and he starts cleaning them all off, cleaning all their parasites off, which is really cool to watch actually. I also got a little tiny banana wrasse, a halochorus. Um, basically I had a planaria issue. If you look back on a few of my videos, I had a flatworm issue uh, a while back and the halochorus species I've been told are one of the only fish that do go for planaria, flatworms. So yeah, I uh, I wanted to get some fish with jobs basically. So cleaner wrasse obviously cleans parasites. Banana wrasse will help with the planaria issues. <clears throat> and then the other fish that I got, <clears throat> not got a job, just looks pretty, uh, is a little firefish. He's cool. He just hangs around where that goby is at the moment. Yeah, you can see he just went into the rock there. That's his little hiding spot. That's where he lives. And uh, you'll see him poke his head out every now and again. Um, I actually, I got a few uh, peppermint shrimp quite a few months ago now, probably about five months ago. Never seen them since I put them in the tank. Never once seen them, not a single glimpse. Well, the other night I was looking round the back actually towards where the firefish goes in and I see a couple of tentacles. Um, and it definitely wasn't my cleaner shrimp or my fire shrimp because I could see them round the front of the tank. So I might... I might have both of them still alive in there. I honestly thought they were dead after a couple of weeks. I thought something had eaten them, maybe one of the crabs or something. But no, I'm pretty sure I've got at least one peppermint shrimp still in there. But yeah, they haven't touched my Aptasia, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, the, the Aptasia don't seem to be spreading too bad at the moment. I've probably got four or five in the tank. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've used Aptasia X. Um, sorry Red Sea, I don't rate it at all. As soon as I put it in there, the first one multiplied into, well, like I say now, I've got four or five in there. But every time I use it, they just seem to multiply. So I've give up with the Aptasia X. Uh, not a great product, doesn't seem to do what it says on the tin. But coral wise, my barley slimer, it's got great growth on it. If you look back on one of the first videos that I put in, it wasn't as tall as that, and also it didn't have the little projection out of the side there. So that's been doing really well. Uh, green Hystrix, just absolutely flourishing. It really is. And now I've taken the wave head off of the right-hand side of it as we're looking. Uh, you can see it's starting to grow now because it was starting to, it was growing at an angle. It was all growing towards the left-hand side. Well, now it's starting to bulk up on the right again, which is nice to see. The hammer's doing really well, and also uh, recently, GSP. I want to get it growing across the whole back if I can. Um, I've seen it in a few tanks and I think it looks absolutely great. I might keep it to just this centre section, but basically I've fragged some off and I've stuck it on the back glass. So hopefully, 
within the next few weeks, we'll start seeing some good growth on that. Um, and like I say, I might get it to grow across the whole back or I might have different bits. So on the left-hand section and the right-hand section, I have got, as you can see here, this coral. That's actually supposed to spread out um, across the back area as well, eventually. So I might even put that on one side and then get another one, um, another one for the other side. I can't remember what they're called now. Um, millionaire something maybe but yeah there's a there's a few other there's a few other coral that i might look at and see if i can get those spreading across the back just add a little bit more color to it um so this plate is now starting to interfere with my sps there which is a real shame so i don't know whether to break a little bit of that plate off to be honest so that it doesn't start killing and stinging it because I don't want to lose that SPS. I really like the color of it. This plate here, again, is starting to grow round my red coral there. So I can't even remember the names of them now, but yeah, I'm starting to get a few battles going on. This stylo there, that's starting to interfere with the Montipora, uh, making it go a little bit discolored where it's stinging it. I've had a lot of stinging going on. The pink hystrix is doing well. Um, over the back there you can see my anemone he was just curled up a minute ago because i just fed him a pellet i actually bought some pellets the other day for my anemones uh yeah so i've been feeding one of those every few days pumps just switch back on i've uh, been feeding one of those pellets every few days now just to um keep him happy in the tank um my Hollywood Stunner, I really fragged that down. I got rid of the one that was over this side on the left. I got rid of the whole of that, took it back to the local fish shop and they're trying to sell it off as frags because yeah, that started stinging a hell of a lot of stuff. So I've only got that small section now, but that, that was probably a quarter of that size a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it really, really does grow quickly. So yeah, that's been doing really well. Yumas. Honestly, these Ricordia, they're just a bane of my life at the moment. They're a pain in the backside. I wish I didn't have as many as this. I had one on this side and one on that side in my first video. Well, over this side now, Christ, if I haven't got 50 on that side, it's honestly, it's a joke. They've just multiplied. And if someone can give me some advice on how to frag those off, I do want to get rid of some, to be honest, because they really were starting to sting things. Uh, so yeah, it'd be good if someone does know. I mean, you can see there, my chalice has been stung so badly. It really has. I mean, it's growing back now. You can see around the edges, it's starting to overlap some of the dead area of the coral. But yeah, they really do sting. So I would like to get some of those off. If I can't frag them off, I'll just take that whole section of rock out, uh, maybe hit it with a hammer and bolster and just break it up that way. Uh, I'd rather not lose the live rock. But if I have to, then I will, because I do need to get rid of some of those, because they really are taking over. They just grow like wildfire. A few videos back, you'll know that that colony of zoas almost completely died off um, due to some sort of infection or something. Well, it's, it's completely grown back now. It's absolutely smothered. So yeah, they've been doing really well. Uh, my Yumas, you can see, They've stung the candy canes at the bottom quite badly. So that's why I've moved them over to this side. I really didn't want to see that because they've been doing really well. They're looking really good at the moment. So yeah, uh, inside the tank, doing really well. Really pleased with it. Like I say, I've just done my testing a little while ago. Here's my parameters. So testing ammonia, phosphate, nitrate, nitrite, pH, salinity, temperature. Um, alkalinity, I write both values down just so I can keep an eye on it. And then calcium and magnesium. Everything's looking good. My ammonia is always at zero. I put that down to the Bacto rocks that I've put in. They're like the marine pure balls that you can get or the marine pure plate. So it's a similar thing. Uh, but yeah, I put those in a sock inside the sump. And since I put those in, yeah, the, the bacteria population is obviously really large. So I do like that. I also, every water change that I do, I put in a couple of drops of this Aquaforest BioS. It's basically just beneficial bacteria to help with ammonia reduction. Uh, so that keeps that all in check. Phosphate, it's a little bit low. I don't really want to see 0.01. I want it to be back up to sort of 0.08, which I used to have 
um, and I used to have low nitrate levels. Basically, my nitrate level has crept right up. It did creep up to sort of like 15 parts per million, uh, which I wasn't wanting to see. I want to see it around 2.5. Couldn't work out why, and also my nitrite. I've always had slight bit of nitrite as you can see uh, and I couldn't work it out why I think I've cracked it basically when I originally added in my two tubs of miracle mud I had to raise the skimmer in order for it to fit inside the sump and the water level in the skimmer was only slightly higher than the water level in the sump as it is um, so basically yeah it just wasn't skimming very well and the cup it was only getting sort of a third full and it was probably taking three weeks to get a third full uh, so it just wasn't skimming enough so recently i've upped the water level you can see that it's up quite high now it has been higher than that to be honest um, and the bubbles are normally around where the bayonet is so yeah it's been producing a lot better skim i only emptied that out two days ago and already it's producing a lot more now which is good to see. And it's very concentrated skim, skim mate as well. It's not really diluted, so it's not over skimming. Uh, so yeah, I think now, as you can see, the night traits are coming back down. They were five plus, that was actually 15 that day. Uh, then it went down to eight, now they're down to five. So if I can get those down a little bit more to around the 2.5 mark, I am going to reduce my Nopox dosage. Um, at the moment the nopox dosage is quite high to keep the nitrates down but that's having an adverse effect on the phosphate levels so once i get the nitrates down through a little bit more skimming over the next week or so i will reduce my nopox dosage which is on the auto doser i will reduce that down um, so that my phosphates will start to creep back up a little bit more so i'll keep you in touch with what happens there um, alkalinity that's that's been doing pretty good um, a bit up and down but that's over the course of quite a few weeks to be honest so um, very slight swings per day on that so no effects there uh, calcium absolutely fine that's on the auto doser as well that's on the second chamber just filled that up recently um, dosing about 12 parts per million sorry parts per million 12 mil a day of calcium um, alkalinity wise I'm actually dosing 73 mil a day uh, so I need to fill this back up in a moment which I'm going to do after this video uh, yeah quite a lot of alkalinity magnesium I've never dosed it you can see my values there that's just through water changes and stuff um, and I started doing water changes every few weeks recently instead of every week which I was doing at first so yeah I never really had to dose magnesium but now it's been it's been last few weeks sorry it's been creeping right down so 1300 down to 1280 1240 then 1200 today so basically I'm 150 parts per million out from where I want to be because I want to be at about 1350 so I am going to be dosing magnesium into the tank um, just mixed up a little bit into this container um, 150 parts per million you shouldn't go any more than 10 parts per million per day it's saying because of stressing out the corals and stuff so yeah I'm gonna do I'm probably gonna dose sort of like 20 mil of this a day over the next couple of weeks to see if we can get the level back up to where it should be at about 1350 um, and then yeah I'll start having to dose a little bit more often unfortunately my bubble magus doser only has three pumps on it at the moment um, I'm doing alkalinity, calcium and nopox. So I'll probably end up having to take the nopox off of the auto doser and start dosing that manually so I can put the magnesium on. Or if in the next couple of months um, I can afford it, I will get an extra extension pot for the, for the doser so I can start dosing that automatically as well. Uh, I do Red Sea Colours four of those I because I'm doing 12 mil of calcium per day every other day I do two and a half mil of each one of those colors uh, not the Caroline algae on the left that was just from my reef mature kit at the very start I don't use that so it's just the four there the bioactive elements potassium iron and the iodine just two and a half mil every other day of that um, seems to keep everything in check I also dose reef energy a and b and also reef roids which is down there 
I do those every other day, every three days at the moment. Um, so yeah, not, not overfeeding the coral or anything like that. And everything seems to be working out just fine. So yeah, I'll leave this video there. Um, and I'll give you another update in a couple of weeks time. Hopefully once I've got rid of a few of my yummers, because I do want to get a few more SPS in here now. Um, up sort of like the top levels if I can. Around there, there's quite a bit of space on the rock that I can stick a few. Maybe in the centre, I've just got to be wary of my torches. Both of those torches seem to sting quite a lot as well. But yeah, I'll keep you updated. Um, thanks very much for watching. Any comments or questions you've got, put them in the bottom and uh, I'll answer them when I can. Thanks very much, guys.